Welcome to uh, Northern Italy class today, or webinar, as it were. Um, <clears throat> one thing that we're gonna uh, point out here on the map, for sure, is that we're not going to focus on Piedmont today. Piedmont gets its own presentation. So what we're gonna look at, we're gonna try to go west to east. Uh, we're gonna look at Val d'Aosta, um, Lombardy, Trentino Alto Adige, uh, Friuli, Venezia Giulia, Veneto, and the Emilia Romana, and a little bit of Liguria. That's gonna be really, really quick. We'll spend about three seconds on that region. But I think it's important uh, to take a look at the countries that surround Northern Italy too. Uh, you have France, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, and Slovenia. And so a lot of the winemaking techniques in the uh, sort of edges of Northern Italy, if you will, um, share winemaking techniques that you see in those countries too. And we'll even talk about some vineyards uh, that cross over but we start in the west in the Val d'Aosta. And um, as always, we try to make it as easy as possible to remember the growing regions. Uh, for me, my friend Jill taught me that it's A, B, C, D, E, and then N and T, which is uh, Arnaud, uh, Mont Gervais, Blanc de Morger de La Salle, Chambov, Donos, Enfer de RVA, and then Neus and Tourette. This is the smallest and the least populous of Italy's 20 regions. Uh, I will say, yeah, 20 regions, right? Italy is massive. There's a lot to study here. Uh, we're not gonna go as super in depth on each of the regions as we might normally do so with other countries. Um, we're gonna just try to take a, an approach of what do we need to know about each of these regions, right? Um, there's a continental climate for the Val d'Aosta. The vineyard land is uh, carved out by the Dora Valdea River. Um, we mentioned uh, the A, B, C, D, E, and T. Um, it's important to, to take a look at, let's see if we can zoom in here, um, the, where the regions are kind of tells you what grape varieties grow best there. Uh, for pre-Blanc, you find Blanc de Morger de La Salle. For Petit Rouge, it's Enfer de RVA, Tourette, Neuss, and Chambov. And then you get Pico Tindro or Nebbiolo as we start getting closer to, uh, to Piedmont, right? And that's in Arnaud, Montjove, and uh, Donos. And so you can see here the white wine, uh, DOC is Blanc de Morgier de La Salle. All of the red wine only ones, if you look to the far east, the Pico Tindro is Arnaud, Montjove, and Donas. In the center of it, you'll find Chambov, Montfair de RVA, and Tourette for Petit Rouge. And then Neuss does uh, Pinot Gris for whites and Petit Rouge for reds. You can also um, varietally label here. Uh, you'll find uh, a couple of producers that make few men that come into the market that I've seen from Rosenthal. Cool. Uh, up next is Lombardy. And we'll pause here for a minute and try to take a look at a couple of maps. Um, I like this map because it details a lot of things, but unfortunately, sometimes it can be a lot to look at, right? Um, so just to point out the major DOCGs that we're paying attention to, Francia Corta is right here. Valtellina Superiore and Sforzato di Valtellina are up in the northern portion of Sandrio, close to the Swiss border and really producing Alpine wines. Um, and that leaves you with Scanzo and Il Triple Pavese Matoto Classico. Scanzo is right here in this little area. And then Il Triple Pavese uh, is this whole area, but Matoto Classico are the wines that uh, qualify for DOCG. There's a handful of other DOCs that are important here. Um, we're not going to get too bogged down by those just yet. Uh, here's probably a better map, um, but it doesn't show as much of the detail of where those DOCGs are. Capital city of Milan is important. This is where you might fly into if you're going to visit the region, um, as I did six years ago, almost to the date, actually. Um, so your DOCG, Francia Corta, we mentioned here, and we'll get a little more in depth in that in just a second. Uh, El Triple Pavese Matoto Classico, these are Pinot Noir driven. Um, you can label it, it varietally if you get to 85%. Um, these are for non-vintage 15 months on the lees and vintage 24 months. Uh, if you make still wines in the area, you just uh, qualify for DOC. Uh, Moscato Descanso are sweet Pasito reds from the red Moscato grape. These are aged two years, uh, but without wood. And they come in 500 milliliter Futura bottles. If you think of uh, the Inniskillen bottles that we might see for ice wine. 
Uh, Sforzato di Valtellina, these are basically Recciolo with dried Chavanesca, which is another synonym for Nebbiolo here. Uh, the resulting wines are vinified dry to around 14% ABV. And then Valtellina Superiore, we're going to get uh, a little more in-depth on that in just a second, too. Uh, you also find the only non-Emilia Romana Lambrusco zone in Lambrusco Montevano, which is right down here, a budding Emilia Romana. Kind of makes sense, right? Uh, I hate this map, but <laughs> this is one of the better ones of French Accorda uh, and the different communes that can produce French Accorda. Probably not as important as understanding the process of French Accorda, right? Um, just like Champagne, French Accorda is a wine of process. Uh, it is made in the same method. Uh, the still wines of the area are released as Corta Franca or Sabino IGT. Um, your great producers here, Guido, Guido Berlucci and Catabalsco. The DOCG was earned in 1995. Uh, here you have Chardonnay, Pinot Nero, and a maximum of 50% Pinot Bianco. Uh, your non-vintage wine spent a little more time in the Lees, 18 months than what we just saw with Oltrepo Pavesi. Um, there's a few different labeling uh, styles that you might see. You might run into Saten, uh, which are white grapes only. They're 24 months on the Lees. And you'll notice as we change uh, labeling, uh, we get more time on the lees with these. I think it's important to note. So 10 is also a, a maximum five atmospheres of pressure compared to a typical five to six. It's a little softer stylistically. Uh, your rosé wines from French at Corta are also 24 months on the lees. Here they require a minimum 35% Pinot Noir. And this is produced by blending rather than Saunier. Uh, your vintage wines or Villa Simato are 30 months and they have to be 85% harvested in the state of years. And then you can get to Reserva with 60 months lees aging. Um, if you want total aging for any of those, you can simply add seven months. And it's important to note um, that these wines are, I would say, comparable definitely to Champagne. They're delicious. Uh, here's the Valtellina. Um, you can see Switzerland way up in the north here. Uh, you can see the Ada River, which is the river that bisects all of the different uh, zones of Valtellina. For Valtellina Superiore, uh, DOCG, you could see it's sort of the orangish areas outlined. And then within that, there are several subzones. Starts in the west uh, with Marogia, um, and then you get Sacella, you get Grimello, Inferno, and then you finally get Valgella way over here in Fay. Here's another map of it. Um, you can kind of see how it sits the valley. These are higher elevation wines. Again, we mentioned Chavanesca. Um, it provides a little more light, angular style than what you would find in, say, Piedmont uh, because of the elevation uh, and the fact that it's in the valley um, and that these are really alpine style. Abundance of sunshine, too, because of the valley here. Uh, if you were to bottle your wines that were grown here in Switzerland, in neighboring Switzerland, you'd have to label it as Stagafosli. Um, great producers are Pepe and Nino Negri. Um, for aging, you can call it Superiore. If it meets the 24 months age and 12 months in oak, uh, you could also get to reserve by adding another 12 months of aging in general onto it. Uh, your minimum ABV for these wines is 12%. Liguria, boy, we mentioned this would be quick, didn't we? Um, great produ uh, produc production areas for DOC for Pigato wines, which is Vermentino or Coli di Luni in Riviera Liguria di Ponente. Um, and then you'll find Rosese, the reds from Riviera Liguria di Ponente as well. And then you'll have Bosco-based white wines for Cinque Terre. I, I once had a master sommelier blind me on Pigato from Liguria, and I thought it wasn't very nice. Um, but she was just trying to see what where my acid calls were, which was super fine. Uh, and you can see Liguria here, and probably close to France, right, in Corsica, and you can understand why Vermentino plays really well in this area. Uh, up next, we'll move um, to Emilia Romana. Uh, so we've covered most of the northern areas. We'll get to Veneto in just a minute. Uh, Emilia Romana is um, home to not just fantastic wines, but also some wonderful foodstuffs. In Modena, you'll find balsamic vinegar. Uh, this is a shot I took um, at a production facility there literally six years ago to the day. Uh, and then a little bit further west, you'll find Parma, where they, of course, produce uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, delicious foodstuffs here. Uh, but that's not the only thing, right? Um, you'll find also Albano Romana. Um, you'll find Coli Bolognese. 
Uh, plenty of Lambrusco to be talked about here. Uh, let's take a look at the DOCGs for the area. Um, Romana Albana is from this area right here. It was the first white DOCG, I believe, in all of Italy. Uh, and then Coli Bolognese Pignoletto Classico sits right here. And then if you want to take a look at your Lambrusco zones, 12, 13, and 14 all sit right north of Modena. And that's Lambrusco di Sorbara, Lambrusco Grasparosa di Castle Vetrano, excuse me, Castle Vetro, and Lambrusco Salamino di Santa Croce. Um, we mentioned prosciutto di Parma and balsamic vinegar, Romana Albana being Italy's first white DOCG, the best wines here are probably Cito. Um, Coli Bolognese Pignoletto is for dry white Grichetto. Um, and one quick theory question I'm gonna to toss out to the group. Can you name the grape varieties for balsamic DOP? It's a fun one. Um, Trentino Alcology, we should probably spend more time talking about Lambrusco in this. Um, I'll, I'll make sure to add that into this presentation at some point. But for today's, we're gonna gloss over it just for a moment to get to Trentino Alto Adige. I think this area um, produces some fantastic wines. Uh, you can see the Adige River here, which lends its name to the area. Um, Trentino in the south, uh, and then you'll find Adige here in the north. Um, you'll find more Germanic speaking in the north and more Italian speaking in the south. Obviously you're closer to Austria here in Switzerland. Uh, there's a handful of different DOCs. Uh, you also see the Isarco River for the Valle Isarco. There's a bunch of different little rivers that split off here, but those are probably the most important ones. Um, it's funny to note that red actually outproduces white wine in the area. I think we think of uh, Pinot Grigio pretty specifically. We think of the area because of uh, deductive tasting. Um, Val d'Adige, Val d'Adige, DOC, actually covers both uh, of those regions and extends down into Verona and the Veneto. Uh, you find a large number of varietally labeled wines here. You'll find Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Bianco, Moulin Chargal, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Convertstraminer, where they think it could be possible um, origins in the village of Tremine here. Uh, we mentioned that Val d'Osarco in the northeast corner of the Alto Adige starting to get attention for German and Austrian varieties, um, such as Solvaner, Kerner, Veltliner, uh, Turlon is the co-op in the Turlano DOC that you can see here in the sub area of Alto Adige. Um, the three quarters of the production of this area is co-op. Doesn't mean that it's uh, less quality. The co-ops here can be rather fantastic. For anybody that was lucky enough to be at Texon last year, you may have had the opportunity to taste some of the, uh, the older Turlon wines um, that are uh, some labeled as Weissburgunder, um, some later labeled as uh, Pinot Blanc. Uh, they're beautiful wines, especially with a little bit of age on them. You also find Schiava or Vernach. Uh, it's the predominant red grape, particularly in the Santa Maddalena area right here. Um, Casselaire, DOC and Trentino in the south also allows for Schiava to be blended with Merlot. Um, Lagrine is native to, to Trentino, but also thrives quite well in the Valle de Sarco. Uh, the elevation in the area is more for your white grapes and then your valley floor is dedicated to apple production. Uh, and then down in the, the DOC of Teraldigo uh, Rotaliano, you'll find Teraldigo grape. Um, and next we're going to look at the Veneto. And this is where we come into Lake Garda. We'll take a look at Bartolino, um, obviously the uh, Valpolicella. Um, but we're going to take a look at uh, the region in general. Yeah. There's a lot of DOCGs here. This map has all the information, but looking at it from 30,000 feet can be very, very frightening. <laughs> so what I attempted to do is break down the DOCGs and compartmentalize them, right? This is how we learn. This is how we study things. Uh, we can break them out. So I broke it into Garganaga DOCGs, Prosecco DOCGs, Corvina-based DOCGs, other red DOCGs, and then white wine DOCGs. Um, and then I circled some of the areas that we want to take a look at. So for Garganaga, you'll find Suave Superiore and Recioto di Suave right here. And then just to the east of it, you'll find the Recioto di Gambalara. So that's where your Garganaga DOCGs are, okay? 
they're a little bit away to the east of Lake Garda um, as you head towards the Adriatic coast. For your Prosecco DOCGs, you've got Conegliano Valdebiadne Prosecco, which is here, and you've got a solo Prosecco. And we'll get to Prosecco a little bit more. Uh, I've got another map that's going to show you the Cartice um, sub DOCG, if you will. Uh, for Corvina based, um, you need to pay attention to Bartolino Sapidiorde, which is right on the, the edge of Lake Garda, Amarone del Valpolicella, and Reciota del Valpolicella right here. Uh, for your other reds, uh, you find Rubosa Piave and Piave Manalote. Um, you find Frioli uh, di Bagnoli with Rubosa Piave here too. And then um, up here in the same area as the Asolo Prosecco, you can use Bordelais varieties to produce Montello Rosso. For white wine only DOCGs, we know that Lisan is right here in the shared area with Frioli Venezia Giulia. Um, you've also got Coli Ugiani, Fior di Aranzio, uh, excuse me, Fior di Aranzio for Moscato Giallo, right here. And then back up here next to your Prosecco uh, Valdebiadne, you find Coli di Conegliano, which produces Manzoni, Chardonnay, and Pinot Bianco. So confusing, yes, but if you can build yourself five sets of note cards for the region, um, put a map on it, and say, hey, what are the Garganaga DOCGs? What are the Prosecco DOCGs? What are the Corvina DOCGs? What are the other red DOCGs? And what are the white DOCGs of the area? You can come up with a full list of 16, I think, um, in, a, in a day's worth of study. A deeper look um, at Valpolicella in particular, um, Corvina based uh, with Rondinella and other non aromatics. Um, if you get to Superiore, these styles have higher ABV and a minimum of 12 months of aging. The classical region of the area is to the west in the fingers of the shores of Lake Garda. Here you'll find Fumane, Murano, Negrar, San Ambrosio, and San Pietro and Cariano. The eastern DOC zones of Valpentena and Alassi, which is where Dalforno is, can be equally as compelling. And you're starting to see more and more vigna bottlings uh, becoming common, so single vineyards. Um, Amarone del Valpolicella and Recioto employ the apassamento process for over three months, although uh, Recioto typically dries for an extra month for semi-sweet to sweet wines, whereas Amarone is basically fermented to full dryness, although um, there's always a couple of uh, grams of residual sugar remaining for those that are working on deductive tasting. Uh, for modernist producers, you'd look towards Del Forno and Allegrini. Uh, if you're looking for traditional, Quintarelli would be your guy, right? Uh, they may be labeled as Reserva if they're aged for four years. Um, there is no mention of, of oak uh, aging here, interestingly enough. Um, Recioto may also be Spumante, which I find to be kind of weird. <laughs> uh, they both gained their DOCG in 2010 and that push to like get everything uh, DOCG before they they thought they were going to stop allowing those, um, along with the DOC for Valpolicella Repasso, which is 12.5% ABV and then 13% for your Cipidiore. Amarone may, may only use up to 12 tons per hectare, 120 uh, hectoliters is a ton, is a lot, but the grapes are going to dry out and reduce the volume. Uh, your planting density here is 3,300 vines per hectare, uh, ABV for Amarone 14%, and then you could sub up to 50% Corvinone. I think this is a um, an interesting point to make. There's a local uh, restaurant, well, it was a local restaurant that had a variety varietally labeled wine list, um, and I asked the sommelier where they kept Amarone, he said, well, we keep it in Corvina. And I thought, you're not doing your guests any service by hiding the Amarone under Corvina. Most people don't know what the hell that is. And then I asked him what he does with the, the producers that sub up to 50% Corvinone. I don't think he liked that very much. Um, further in the Veneto, Bartolino DOC, uh, we mentioned right there on the, the shores of Lake Garda, they're still producing Corvina and Rondinella, but in a much lighter style. So. Um, this would be like Valtellina Superiore is the lighter style compared to, to Piedmont, whereas Bartolino is the lighter style compared to Valpolicella, right? Uh, you also find Bartolina Chiaretto for super light rosés. I think I've mentioned this in previous Italian um, presentations, but I always want to bring up there are three basic styles of rosé in Italy. Your lightest style is Chiaretto, your medium style is Rosato, and then your fullest style is Cherosuolo, which is very pale red wine almost. 
You've also got the Suave DOC just to the east of Valpolicella uh, for 70% plus Garganega plus Trebbiano di Suave and Chardonnay. Uh, this is once known as Europe's largest vineyard. The expansion went, went well beyond its hilly Classico zone and has lost uh, a lot of its original meaning. Reggiore Suave and Suave Superiore both qualify for DOCG, although Superiore has to come from that Coldy Scaligari or Classico zone. Um, with 12 months aging and 24 for reserve. But we'll get a little bit more in depth. I've got a map for you on that one too. Uh, Recioto is from the same delimited area and must dry for four to six months. And Botrytis here is certainly encouraged. Um, Recioto and Suave DOC can, can be spumante, although Superiore may not. Uh, the Gambolara DOC that we looked at just to the east of Suave is also Garganega. Of course, Recioto qualifies for DOCG. Uh, for sweet and, uh, excuse me, sweet still and sparkling wines from 100% dried Garganica. Uh, you also have the Berganzo Torcolato DOC that we see Fausto Miculin makes uh, super acidic Vespaiolo grapes in a Pasito method. Um, I know we have those in my market, the Miculin wines, that you might see them around the U.S. too. Uh, then you get the Berganze DOC for just numerous varietal wines. Your other DOCGs of the area we mentioned, Lisan, of course, being shared with Friuli, Piave Malanote, and Col Eugiani Fior di Ranzio for Moscato Giallo. Here's a picture of the grape drying process or a passamento. I took that um, myself, actually. Here's a closer look at uh, the local areas, right? So Lake Garda, you can see Coli di Lugano wines would come from here your Bartolino zone, including the Classico region right up next to it, your Valpolicella zone, including the Classico region that runs right up to it. We mentioned Val d'Adige, right? That's um, Alto Adige in Trentino, but it spreads all the way down into Veneto. And so your western portion of Valpolicella is where the Classico area is for that, uh, those five um, fingers, essentially. And then as you get further east, you'll find Valpentena and Elasi, and then you run into the Suave area with the Classico zone and Coli Scaligari Hills right here. Um, here's Suave, a little deeper look to it. You can see uh, this map is super cool. The entire area of yellow is Suave. Uh, your DOCGs are in the green area and include the DOC of Coli Scaligari. And then your Classico zone is right here. Cool. So you can see a couple of things though, located east of Verona, um, it's three times larger today than it was in 1931. The original zone is known as Classico, uh, mild continental, clump, continental climate with hot summers, cold, wet winters, and dense fogs in the fall. Um, the soil in the eastern part of the Classico area is high in volcanic rock, and the western section is higher in limestone. Uh, Prosecco, we wanna to touch on this um, just like we did with Francia Corda. Of course, this being a product of uh, the Charmant method where they use the pressurized tanks for secondary fermentation. Um, your sp Spumante wines are full sparkling at three and a half um, atmospheres of pressure minimum. Your Frizzante are only slightly effervescent though at one to two and a half atmospheres of pressure. Um, I can't see that I've run into a ton of Frizzante here. Um, they added the two DOCGs, the Conegliano Valdobbiadene Prosecco and a Solo Prosecco um, that can both produce still or sparkling. I can't say that I've had a lot of still wine from the area. Um, your fully sparkling Superiore wines can be produced in both. We're starting to see more Rive wines, and these must be hand harvested, indicate a vintage, and they have to come from one of the 43 frazziones, or basically villages of the area. Uh, the most important, though, is Cartizze. Uh, pl planting density for the area is 2,500 vines per hectare, kind of, kind of low. Uh, your press yields um, are 70 liters, per 100 kilograms of grapes. Um, and then you'll find some labeled as Calfondo, which is traditional method, um, but without disgorgement. So it'll be cloudy. Um, so here's uh, the Prosecco production area that you can see. I think it's important to note, a lot of people don't realize that it stretches across both Veneto and Friuli for just DOC. And then you can get those Prosecco Trieste DOC that's just in Friuli. Um, you'll see here too a solo, um, Valdebiadne and Conegliano. Let me get a better look at it on this map. Um, this is a super cool map. Um, so your Prosecco DOC, right, stretches across both growing regions. 
your Trieste POC is only in Friuli Venezia Giulia. But then the most important area right here, you can get Prosecco DOC Treviso, which is a subzone. Uh, we know a Solo and Conegliano Valdebiadene. And then within that, with just east of the city of Valdebiadene, you find the Conegliano Valdebiadene Prosecco Superiore di Cartizze DOCG. These are some, I should probably put some pictures in here, but there's some really steep slopes, like dangerous to drive on, pretty cool stuff going on in the area. Next, we're going to move uh, to the Friuli Venezia Giulia. And for those of you that are fans of the movie The Wedding Singer, this always reminds me of Giulia Giulia, <laughs> which is going to be her name when she got married. Uh, DOCG is here, uh, Ramondolo in the north, um, Coli Orientale del Friuli Piccoli Rosazzo, and then we know, of course, Lisan, which is shared uh, with Veneto. Uh, here's the, the map that shows you where they are. Um, Here's Lisan, here's Ramadolo, here's Coli Orientale Freely, Peak Elite, and here's Rosazzo just inland. Um, being that this is right on the border of Austria, you find German and Austrian techniques uh, for more rapid adaptation to modern winemaking in the 1960s. Really credited to Mario Schiapetto. Um, grape varieties Pinot Bianco, Grigio, Chardonnay, and Sauvignon Blanc, although they just call it Sauvignon here. Um, Although you find Verduzzo Gialla and Picolite producing sweet wines under, in Pasito style under two of the DOCGs, the Ramadolo and the Coli Orientale del Friuli Picolite. Um, that leaves us with two other DOCGs, uh, Rosazzo and Lisan that are Friolano, if you can compartmentalize this area. Uh, within the Coli Orientale del Friuli Picolite, you'll find the Gialla subzone. It's the coolest and the highest elevation. And it's a monopole of Ronca, de, excuse me, Ronchi di Chiala, uh, which are fantastic wines. Although outside of the DOCG, the orange wines of Grobner and Radicon are probably what have driven the most attention. Um, you also get Miani and Livia Fallujah for sort of bigger styles of dry whites. And then you get Sauvignon Blanc from Veneca Veneca, and then Oaks, Oak Age styles from Ronca della Nemitz that are phenomenal wines. Uh, Merlot is your most planted grape, although Cabernet Sauvignon and Franc are planted here as well. You also find Rafasco, Schio Patino, Toronto, and Pignolo uh, being indigenous area, uh, indigenous wines. And I should note too, um, I think it's important to, to realize Slovenia here to the east uh, with those Grovner wines. Um, I think some of their vineyard sites cross over between here and, and Slovenia. Okay, here's a, a vintage chart. Um, you guys know I'm going to give you the same speech every week. I hate giving them out. But this is based off of Parker's vintage chart for Piedmont, Friuli, Trentino, Alto, Hadashé uh, over the last 40 some years. Um, just to point out the vintages that are supremely excellent 78, 82, 89, 90, 96, 2001, 2006, and 10. There's some others in the area. I mean, I, 2004 is pretty ripping. You know, you might want to watch out for the 97s, those are pretty ripping. Um, vintages that you kind of want to avoid, 91, 92, 94, and 2002. That's our show for the day. Um, I certainly appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, I hope this helps you to um, gather your thoughts on Northern Italy. We'll be back with Piedmont. Uh, I think that's next week. If not, it's something else Italy-based, but I'll take a look at the syllabus. We're getting close here, guys. Um, I know that the CMS has uh, suspended examinations for the time being for those of you that are taking those but I know people are still out there studying for WSET um, and have other things going on and I think it's important even if you are studying for CMS to to keep your nose to the grindstone for the time being because once you let up then uh, atrophy sets in. Cheers gang we'll see you next week. <laughs>